Hi, I'm Jason Goldberg from OST. Thank you so much for participating in the OST Kit Alpha. I'm here today with Jason Banks. Hi, Jason. Hi. Uh, so Jason is one of our senior blockchain engineers, uh, one of the founders of OST, a smart contract expert, been with us for a long time on the project. And right now you're going through the process of minting your token economy. We're minting tokens. Uh, minting tokens takes uh, several minutes, uh, especially on testnet. Uh, and so what we wanted to do today is to walk you through uh, what exactly is going on here, right? So uh, what are the processes and sub-processes involved uh, when you mint your tokens? Uh, first, before we jump into it, let me say thanks again for participating in the Alpha. Um, your feedback, your testing is absolutely critical to helping build the blockchain toolkit for business that meets the real needs of real businesses. And so thanks again for participating. Please send us your support, your feedback, uh, so we can make the product better and better uh, in the months ahead uh, as we bring it, uh, the product to fruition. So we're minting tokens. Um, why does it take so long? Why, why does minting tokens on testnet take a long time? That's a fair question. Um, we have two chains all acting in concert. We have the OpenSG Utility blockchain, and we have the value chain, or the Eurofton Ethereum testnet chain. And what's happening to get the economy going is the deploying a number of contracts and number of transactions involving contracts and addresses on both chains. So the processes of sending the transactions adding them to blocks and processing those blocks just takes some time. So we're initializing the token economy, right? And so there's a whole bunch of processes that are taking place on both of these blockchains, all right? Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the first step on this is proposing the tokens um, okay. on the utility chain, right? So we're going to, let's, let's write on our board here, pose tokens on utility chain. What does that mean? What does it mean to propose tokens? So when you're proposing your tokens on utility chain, you, you are submitting the information you gave on the dashboard to the chain, which is so the token symbol, token name, and other information that goes into uh, deploying the branded token contract. Okay, so after you've proposed the tokens, so you've kind of transmitted all this information, and these are the tokens that I want, this is the conversion rate that I want, here's how many I want, right? Mm -hmm. um, then you register them, correct? And you register them on the utility chain first, correct? Yes. Okay, what does it mean to register the tokens? So when you register the token, this is telling the protocol contract that administers the entire process that this token contract exists, uh, and this process creates the UUID, which is used to acknowledge and be aware of this token as it's used in various transactions on both the utility chain and the value chain. And additionally, there are some validation steps involved in this process. Okay, so we're registering the tokens, so we propose them on the utility chain, we register them, and then I think you go back, and once you register them on the utility chain, you get it back out to Ethereum and register them as well, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean to register them on Ethereum as well? Sure. So in, in the same way that there is a protocol contract on the utility chain, there's a protocol contract on the value chain, on the ROPS and Ethereum as well. And so there we have to, after we register it on the utility chain, we need to register it on the value chain such that these, so the transactions are able to act atomically on both chains. Okay. So after registering the tokens on Ethereum, we then move on to deploying the airdrop smart contract. Is that right? Okay. So let's deploy airdrop. First of all, what is airdrop, and why does it get its own smart contract? So airdrop is the process by which we allow the uh, owner of a branded token economy to uh, to get its get the economy going by distributing tokens to its users. And so that's, that, that's a process called airdrop. And so we have this contract that, that, that administers this process. And so when your branded token contract is deployed, after having proposed and registered it, it there is an airdrop contract that is immediately deployed as well. Every branded token has its own airdrop contract. And then in crypto run, then you would need to configure uh, it was the, the uh, ops address, right? Exactly. All right, so the ops address for that airdrop contract, right? Mm -hmm. What does that mean to configure the ops address for that, for that airdrop contract? So there are um, access control features, uh, functionality for every contract that is deployed on the chains that we use. And so in the case of the airdrop contract, there are certain accounts that are able to do certain actions. And so that's what we're doing here. We're saying which account uh, can, send op can send transactions to this contract. Okay, so then after you've done this, um, I remember you walking us through this concept of workers, right? Mm -hmm. And so, what are workers um, in terms of a blockchain, and specifically in terms of this system? So what does it mean when they're authenticating the, the workers? Mm -hmm. 
So we have this, we have worker addresses and a worker's contract. The worker's contract uh, administers the workers. And the point of this is to enable horizontal scaling so that we can be more performant as well as improve uh, key management security. So this helps with managing the users, correct? Yeah. yeah. So, all right, we're authenticating the workers. And then we need to register the price oracle, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll first I'll explain what a, a USD price oracle is um, and what that means in terms of registering it. So we have a price oracle contract that, has been, that was deployed when we set up the OpenSG utility contracts on the OpenSG utility blockchain. And this, this price oracle is being fed information for, for the price of OST versus USD. And, but we allow, so we have the airdrop contract, which needs to know where to go for pricing information. Because mm -hmm. we allow users to, we, we allow users to do transactions priced in uh, fiat as well as in their branded token. And so the price oracle allows the transactions to be priced correctly. So essentially what this allows is that uh, you, if your users are providing a service, let's say, um, and they have a certain number of branded tokens that they want to charge for, you can set that based on the fiat price rather than the branded token value or the, the OST value. Exactly, and then we're able to get an accurate um, USD price for when, when those transactions are being committed to the chain. And I think we're updating this about every hour. So we're fetching the, mm -hmm. the OST price and looking at the USD value, and then the price oracle is adjusting this. Yeah. Um, and we'll kind of optimize this as we, as we move forward uh, mm -hmm. towards after alpha to beta. So the next step, I think, is verifying the transfer to the staking address. All right, mm -hmm. um, and what does that mean? When, to in, order, in order to complete transactions of the OpenST utility blockchain, uh, the account needs to have staked for rent tokens as well as gas. But in order to do that, you need to have OST, or in this case, OST Alpha, on the value chain. So we initially transfer, oh, we are giving OST Alpha to users um, to the to dashboard users, and so that's work from here that that uh, that that OST alpha has been transferred and that the transaction has been committed to the chain. Okay, so now we get into staking, right? We're ready to stake. So, so I think um, now we're going to be staking OST alpha, right? Mm -hmm. To start minting the tokens, right? Okay. So what I think this one's pretty self-explanatory, but let's get into it. What does it mean to stake OST alpha to mint? Exactly. So when you are staking for minting, what is happening is value OST alpha is being staked in the OpenST value protocol contract on the Ethereum Robson blockchain. What this will allow is the the creation of the minting of tokens for the branded token on the OpenST utility blockchain. We staked so that there is there, there is value on the uh, outside the system that represents the tokens that are minted on the utility side. Essentially what this means is when your customers are earning or buying whatever it is, uh, transacting with your brand tokens, that the value of them is always backed up by the value in the real world of OST um, on testnet from OST Alpha exactly. um, that's staked against. So not only do we need to stake OST for uh, minting the tokens, we also need to stake some OST in order to have reserves for gas. Yes, right? absolutely. What is that all about? Like, What do we need gas for on the side chains? So, um, in the case of Ethereum, the Ethereum blockchain and implementations of it, such as our utility blockchain, every transaction, every operation has a gas value assigned to it. And in order to cover the cost of those operations, users need to be able to ha be able to pay for that gas. And that's why we need to stake OST, OpenST, OST Alpha for gas. Okay. So think about so we've we've. We proposed the token, we registered the token, sent all the details there, and then we started to, we staked the token, we staked OST against creating the token. We've created some gas now to run the transactions on the side chains. Now, what's next is really getting these tokens to your users, right? So in this process, in order to be able to simulate transactions, we do what's called an airdrop, which means we send tokens to your users. So we're gonna go through several steps. This is kind of rounding out the, the process here. So what's happening? So airdrop, is basically distribution, is that right? Exactly. All right, um, and so what are the steps along the way for airdropping? Mm -hmm. So when a branded token contract gets deployed, that contract, an airdrop contract was also deployed. Every branded token contract has its own airdrop contract. The point of the airdrop contract is to, as you said, enable distribution of tokens to a branded tokens economy's users, such as to get the economy started, to stimulate it, and then, yeah, so the thing I think we do next first, it's, it's okay, we're good, You're, this is fun. Um, it's a long process. All right. All right, so I think we, we have to verify the users. 
right? So who's getting the airdrop? Mm -hmm. um, and then what happens next? Then we reserve the amount that we need. Yeah, so on the dashboard, we so through the dashboard, a certain number of users have been created, and based on the information that was input to define the economy, uh, a certain amount is being uh, decided for each user. Okay, so we reserve a certain amount, and then what happens next? We approve the smart contract to distribute. Exactly. So the so the uh, so the, the airdrop contract has an airdrop budget holder, which which is the account that initially holds the the total. Car, uh, tokens set aside for airdrop. And that, that address, that account, needs to approve the airdrop contract to be able to um, issue transactions on, uh, on behalf of the user, such as, when, such as an upvote, for instance. When th as that comes through the system, the airdrop contract will be uh, the last port of call. So I think then, what kind of, once we've gone through and verified the users, reserved the tokens, approved the contract, really the next step is to distribute the tokens, right? To allocate the tokens to the users, right? Mm -hmm. um, so allocate the tokens. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think as you can see, there's a whole lot of processes that are happening behind the scenes um, in order to mint your tokens. And um, it takes a little while, because on testnet, if you've made it this far through the video, we really appreciate your watching. Um, and hopefully it was a little educational. Um, we had some fun. Yeah. Um, and uh, we really appreciate your testing again, and, and really, really value and really need your feedback. Um, our goal in the next few months is to gather as much user feedback as possible, to keep iterating on the product, go from alpha to beta, work with hundreds of companies, thousands over time, and build the best blockchain toolkit for business imaginable. Thanks so much for your help, and we'll talk to you soon. Cheers. Good job. Yeah.